Hi, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Councillor Ellie Cook Calvin and I am the Assistant Mayor in Leicester with responsibility for housing and education. Today I want to talk to you about homelessness. Rough sleeping and homelessness is unimaginably tough for those enduring and experiencing it. And COVID-19 has just made it a lot tougher and potentially a lot higher risk. This has required an immediate response from organisations like the City Council who provide vital support. We've responded incredibly quickly and impressively. Over the last two weeks, we have procured an additional 164 temporary accommodation places. We've delivered 600 hot meals and 200 food parcels. And we've delivered 59 support packages which includes duvets, kettles, toasters and fuel vouchers. And there is more to come. I've been amazed by the way our homelessness team and partners in the voluntary sector, business community, police and NHS have responded to the challenges we face with the coronavirus pandemic. In a very short time, we have completely redesigned the way in which we provide essential services. As new challenges emerge, we will need to continue to rapidly adapt to ensure that the homeless and rough sleeping community will be protected over the coming weeks and months. So, in brief, what has changed? COVID-19 and the necessary self-isolation and social distancing measures that are required meant that our dormitory night shelters, our day centres, of roaming kitchens, community centres and libraries, they all closed. We kept number five Hill Street open as our universal offer, but after a serious criminal incident and following police advice, that too had to close for a few days. In these completely uncharted waters, we took immediate and decisive action. We knew of 20 rough sleepers from our regular overnight counts conducted in the city centre and these individuals were found temporary accommodation immediately. We immediately made new accommodation arrangements for 54 individuals who had been displaced from dormitory style provision, which were rendered unsafe by the virus. And this includes those who were supported by One Roof Leicester and had no recourse to public funds. We established an emergency access route to the dorm centre using our frontline police, we have provided advice and assessments to 71 new clients using our emergency, emergency duty line telephone offer. And the basic weekday universal daytime offer has been safely reinstated at number five Hill Street. And this includes access to food, laundry and crisis support. But demand for our services has skyrocketed. We have seen around a 600% increase in those requiring temporary accommodation. And this consists of groups of individuals I will describe as newly visible. Largely sofa surface displaced through fear of spreading the virus, but an additional group of workers that had accommodation arrangements tied with their work. And now that the work has dried up, the accommodation is no longer on offer. In response to this emerging need, it is right that we now ask our outreach team, who have been working from home following advice given to all Leicester City Council employees, to be safely redeployed on our streets. And as of last Friday, we reinstated our multi-agency outreach walk-arounds, which includes face-to-face -face assessments. We continue to press upon the police the importance of using their powers to access emergency beds and we have extended our emergency duty line which is manned by our homeless prevention officers to a seven day week service. But ultimately we know that some individuals will drift back into the city centre during the daytime and may even return to rough sleeping. Addictions and the need to socialise will override the behaviour change required to self-isolate in our temporary accommodation. With this in mind, can I make a plea for any unwanted TVs, radios, jigsaw puzzles, adult colouring books, etc., so that we can provide these individuals with some much needed distraction and entertainment? 
we'll have to continue to adapt to the way we work. And we are already making plans to better utilise the police for dispersal and safe foot policies, working with inclusion healthcare in providing necessary support to those with addictions, and looking at ways to manage our symptomatic clients in a way to reduce infection rates. We will do whatever we need to do. Thank you, stay safe and stay at home.